and we are in, I think. Hello, and welcome to the next part of Sonic 3 and Knuckles in Sonic Origins. Does everything sound okay? I've been tweaking a few settings. I probably shouldn't have, but hopefully now that means that I can actually hear when people follow me, and when I get notifications and stuff on Twitch. So, fingers crossed, all that works. I presume it looks and sounds okay. Is the camera good? I've put it in 4K this time, so I don't have to keep changing the settings over after. Lithium Project said sounds good. That's a good start then. Camera's good too. Excellent. In that case, let's swap around to the game and I'll get started with the Sonic and Knuckles section. And if I can remember which one's the right HDMI port. There we go, now I can see it. So, hopefully by continuing it... Oh no, it's coming off on the TV as well. Ooh, who wants to be British? Especially in this weather. Right, before we start, I have something very important to do. As it's British summertime, got to have a nice British cider to go with it. There we go. Now we can begin. In Mushroom Hill, a stage that I always thought was really weird, because it doesn't really fit in with the rest of the Sonic intro levels. It's kind of an odd one. And I actually had a load of followers between when I streamed last and when I'm doing this, so it'll be interesting to see if any of them show up. If they do, I'll be sure to try and read their names out. Straight into the special stage. Oh yeah, of course, because it's Sonic and Knuckles, you actually get to sort of deposit the rings that you picked up in the Sonic 3 section of the game. Is the game audio and my audio okay? I did tweak it a little bit to make the game slightly quieter. Because when I was playing Klonoa the other day, it was a bit loud compared to me, so hopefully that fixes it. And I should also get the Twitch notifications through my headphones as well, so that should be an improvement. And... Yeah, I think that's everything that I've changed. I didn't want to change too much in case it crashed. But I seem to have got the right settings to be able to run my camera in 4K and not have to, t not have to change it back and forwards every time. So that's really good. Uh, I'm lost. I'm quite... S oh no, shoot, I messed up. I'm quite surprised that there hasn't been any update for... Oh no, am I trapped now? Yeah, I think I messed up there. And I've kind of got this really awkward setup where I've got my iPad in front of me on a little phone stand balancing it there so I can try and read the chat. The great playback. Hey, Retro Break, great to finally catch you live. Glad you could make it. Thanks for joining me. How is Klonoa? I've purchased but not had a chance to start it yet. Um, it's, it's good. I mean, damn, I was still looking at the chat. Okay, I think I said when I was last playing this that I'm not going to keep retrying the special stages because it might get a bit boring, so I'm only going to play them once and not really use the coins like the game actually intends you intend you to do. Um, in terms of Klonoa, I think the port isn't great, honestly, but the game itself is still just as fun as it ever was, and it is one of my favourite platforming series ever, so I was still really happy to play through it again, even if the... Um, it's kind of weird, it's kind of worse than the PS1 game in some ways, especially during the cutscenes, because they used to have really nice like colour schemes to it, and that's all kind of been stripped back for this really basic, uh, really basic cartoony style, which is all done in the game engine as well, which is a bit weird. But yeah, once you get into the actual gameplay, it's fantastic. It still plays just as well, although the Switch does have a bit of frame rate issues. If you do want to check it out, I uploaded my stream onto my um, onto my second channel, my gameplay channel. If you want to just quickly have a look at that later and see what the game's like. But I do plan on playing Klonoa 2, maybe maybe tomorrow, might stream it tomorrow if I'm not doing anything. 
Oh yeah, it had an incredible PS1 filter. I'll, I won't spoil that. If I stream tomorrow you can see what that filter's like, but... Let's just say it was impressive. It made me laugh anyway. My collection video. Was that the one I uploaded on Friday showing off how everything's hooked up? I think some people were a bit shocked about the, uh, the amount of effort that I'd gone into to get everything working properly. I've had some comments saying that people's brains were fried watching that video. But, you know, so was mine when I was setting it up. But I really enjoy tinkering around with that sort of stuff. As I'm sure you can tell. Although I haven't actually used any of it for streaming yet, so it'll be interesting to see whether that holds up. Maybe I'll actually try playing um, the original Klonoa on PS1 see whether I can actually stream the, the actual system. That'll be a good test to make sure I've got everything plugged in properly. And like I said in that video, the other really good thing with the setup is the fact that I can actually record the gameplay separate to the stream as well. So I can be doing the streams and also recording for a video at the same time, rather than having to do it after, or trying to you know, download it off Twitch or something and cut out the audio. So yeah, really excited to actually start putting all of this into use now that now that I've finally moved in and now that I've actually got time to start creating things. So very excited about the future. Lots of good stuff coming up. I wrote a big blog post on Patreon earlier with some of the plans that I've got for the channel. Ah. I think the floor is going to start catching up with me soon. I think this music's a bit different, actually. I know they've... Obviously the soundtrack's different, and it'll be interesting to hear the difference between the original ones and the ones that were taken out of Sonic and Knuckles. Actually, I don't know whether there was any taken out of Sonic and Knuckles. It might have just been from Sonic 3. If anyone knows if there was any tracks that Michael Jackson worked on for this portion of the game, let me know, but now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know whether there is. I don't remember any sounding like his style anyway. And once again at the end of this stage, I used to know exactly where to make this land, like on the pixel, to be able to get the stuff to come out of the ground, but obviously I've forgotten all that now. Organised chaos, that's probably the best way of putting it. On to Act 2. I love how all the acts in Sonic 3 and Knuckles blend together like that. It's really cool. And there's Knuckles. It is kind of weird playing this as well because I never actually played it on the Mega Drive back in the day. I actually played it on the PC. And because um, it split Sonic and Knuckles up into two different games, whenever I would play the Sonic and Knuckles bit, it was so different to a normal Sonic game that I actually thought it was like a fake or like some some weird bootleg version of Sonic. Because I didn't I didn't know about the Sonic and Knuckles lock-on cartridge. On the actual Mega Drive, I only had Sonic Three, so that's that's pretty funny. I always thought that this level wasn't a real Sonic level for the longest time. Yeah, I think it was only ones in Sonic 3. Um, Ice Cap, uh, Casino Night, and... What's the last level called? Final Base? Something like that? I think it was just them three. It just so happens that in the game they're sort of back-to-back. -back. So in this version, you get basically three completely different songs back-to-back -back that don't sound anywhere near as good as the originals. But at least the Sonic and Knuckles soundtrack is all intact. And now let's try and get those blue spheres again. They still haven't fixed the fact that the music doesn't speed up. Oh, I was expecting it to be the same level as the one I failed earlier, but it's different. Obviously, there's like millions of combinations for this. But I don't know whether it actually does it randomly in the game, or whether it just does it randomly on the 
the lock-on version of it. But yeah, in the original, the music's supposed to speed up. Oh no, I've messed that up. Uh, I'll have to try and come back to that one at the end. I think I've failed this. I'm not going to remember where that is. I'm going to block myself in somehow. There's five left. Maybe it'll be okay? It's weird, having the... Three left. Having the music stay the same speed actually makes it less tense. Usually I'd be really panicking by now because it was getting faster. Oh, I think I see it. I see it over there. How am I going to get over there? There they are! Ah, uh, I trapped myself. Yeah, launch base, that's it. Not final base. So, what's your favourite zones in Sonic and Knuckles? Um, mine is... I'm trying to think. Probably... Lava Reef just because I love the music so much. So I hope that music's still intact. Lava Reef Act 1. Or... Maybe the next one, maybe Flying Battery. Another special stage. Shall I try again? Sure. I think I've only got two emeralds left to get. And it is different again. Man, I really suck at these special stages. I need to remember to leave an opening on this one. Off to a better start. section. I know these aren't the most fun to watch, that's why I don't want to keep retrying them. Ah! Uh, and because I'll mess up like that and restart it. Bam, 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 bam. So how's everyone's days been anyway? Enjoying the week so far? Managing to get through the insane heat that we've got here in the UK? We actually gave in and bought ourselves an air conditioning unit and it's it's really good to so like leave it on for 10 minutes and then the room is tolerable, finally. Working from home was just impossible. And I just started a new job as well. And I'm three days in. It's going well so far. But yeah, it was a struggle on that first day. It was like 35 degrees in this room and I was just could not pay attention to anything. And yesterday I had to go to the office and it was such a long journey to get there because the trains were delayed on the way back. It took me like nine hours in the end just travelling there and back. So I'm glad I don't have to do that every day. Anyway, now we get this cool end of level boss fight with a sort of 3D effect which I always thought was super impressive. Look at that. It's not really 3D, but it looks cool. Ah, oh, I beat him up so fast he didn't even get a chance to see it. You have to wait, Sonic, I'm having a drink. Dun, 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 dun. I wonder if it if the pause cheat works. I don't know whether you can pause it on this section actually. No, you're not chasing after it. On Sonic 3 there's that same ship flying past and if you pause it gets rid of the sound effects. Yeah, enjoy this awesome music. I'll try not to sing along. I'll 
just silently dance. Oh, I didn't last long. Such a good song. Maybe the best song in the game. Maybe the second best, after Flying Battery. This level is just like a lot more fun version of that level in Sonic 2 after you've been in Tails' um, airplane. Can't remember what that level's called now. But yeah, this is basically a lot more fun version of that. Where you don't have to worry about falling into the sky and dying, which seemed to happen a lot. I don't really remember that much about this game though compared to some of the other games. So I'm looking forward to playing through it again because it has been a while. I remember I really hate Sandopolis zone, so they expect me to get really frustrated with that level. Because it's got one of those annoying endless scrolling sections where you have to jump off at the right time else you don't you don't manage to advance through the stage which I always really hate hey we'll be seeing more of that sort of anti-gravity stuff later on in the game I don't think this is the right way but let's see if we can get up here anyway Maybe it is the right way. Seems like I'm going the right way anyway. Unless this is going to take me around in a circle. Oh no, that's good. I got three. Uh, I knew I'd get caught out by one of them by just spinning my way through. It does feel weird not having lives. I know I've said that before, but kind of makes trying to collect as many rings as you can a little bit pointless because they don't really do anything anymore. But there you go, I just, I just got rid of some just to just to prove a point, you know, that's all. I had too many. Gotta leave some for the bad nits. This bit reminds me of that bit in Sonic 1 where you have the, the spike balls going around in circles. In Scrap Brain, is it? I think. This bit's boring, you just have to wait for an opening to come through the floor. Very reminiscent of uh, Rocket Knight Adventures. Oh yeah, this boss. This is a funny boss. This boss actually kills itself. You just have to stand in there and, <laughs> and then get out of the way and he'll hit himself in the head. And hit Tails as well, but who cares. <laughs> Tails, move! Hey, I heard something. Someone followed me. Oh no, someone raided me, cool. Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel. Do they call them channels on Twitch? I'm not sure, but hey, glad to have some new people. I've only actually been streaming for a month. This is only my fourth stream. So hopefully you think I'm okay at it. Hopefully you're enjoying. Hopefully you're going to enjoy some Sonic and Knuckles. I've already played through the Sonic 3 part. Ah, uh, getting too many followers, I can't read all your names out. Jarrow B, Halsey, but I'm trying to play and read names at the same time. Good job I got my iPad on the side this time, so... I think I just discovered one of the glitches that people have mentioned as well. There was something wrong with the collision detection, apparently. Um, where you can sometimes like get stuck where you wouldn't in the normal game, because they've they basically had to make a new collision engine just for this version of the game. Hello everyone, I can't read everyone's chats, but thank you for stopping by. About 500, wow. DGR Dave, I'll have to check him out. I, I really don't know anything about Twitch, so um, I need to spend a bit more time on it. I mostly stick to YouTube, so all this is basically new to me, so ho hopefully you think I'm doing an okay job. 
I did ask on Twitter the other day for people to send me some... Ah! I did ask on Twitter for people to send me some recommendations of um, Twitch streamers, retro gaming streamers that I can follow. So... Oh, brilliant! You've seen me on YouTube, that's cool. Yeah, that's where I spend most of my time, so if you want to go and check out YouTube, it's just called Retro Break. And... I've nearly got 20,000 subscribers on there. That's what I'm hoping to get like, by next month-ish. And I've got loads of plans. I should collab with Dave. I don't know who he is. <laughs> I'll, I'll check him out after this. Someone remind me of his name before we finish tonight. Uh, do I play Mario Maker 2? I've I've played a lot of it on my own. I haven't I haven't played any on stream. I did a video when Mario Maker 1 came out on the Wii U. That's how long I've been doing YouTube. Where I played through some people's levels. Uh, oh, oh god, I'm scared of this section. I think someone mentioned affiliate. I'm still trying to tick off all the boxes for that. I think I've nearly done everything. Um, the only one I was struggling to do was stream seven times in a month, because I was only planning to stream every Thursday. But, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be doing some extra streams in between, just so that I can tick that box and Twitch likes me. And then, I don't even know what benefits you get for being an affiliate, really, outside of... Outside of maybe having... Um, donations, maybe? Ah! I knew that was a bad idea. You get the money! Yeah, that's important. Definitely do a collab with DGR and Mario Maker 2. Yeah, I'd be up for that, if he, if he would be. I wonder if he follows me on Twitter or anything. I could send him a DM later. But yeah, that's, that's really kind of him to send people over. This this shows how little I know about Twitch. When I um, when I finished my last stream and it asked me to go and raid someone, I wasn't actually following anyone who was live. That's that's how little I know about it. So, yeah, hundred follows. Oh, fantastic! Wow, thank you everyone for following so quickly as well. I hope you enjoy it. I used to do a lot of let's plays back in the day, so. Uh, a lot of Let's Plays where I would cut this sort of thing out. <laughs> I, yeah, I used to... Oh god, there we go again. I used to I used to trick trick people into thinking that I was better at games than I actually am. By editing together the, um, the level so it didn't look like I died. That came in handy doing my Mega Man Let's Plays back in the day. He spoke very highly of my YouTube. That's very nice of him. I do put a lot of time and effort into YouTube, so definitely go and definitely go and check it out if you uh, if you feel like watching some retro gaming content. I try and do one video a week, but because I just moved house, it's um, it's been a bit difficult recently to do regular videos. But I'm slowly picking it back up. Dying's the best part. Oh, my light just went super bright. I have these new lights, and it's got a remote, but sometimes it just, like, has a mind of its own. I don't know why. Another super easy boss. This one's kind of similar to that boss in... Is it Sonic 3? The one with the platforms that spins around and you have to jump up to the top and hit it. Releases a video every day! Oh my god, I would not be able to do that. Not with a full-time job as well. What sort of videos does he do though? Are they like edited videos or are they stream vods or just talking videos? I don't know how you'd be able to do a video a day. Especially not if you edit it yourself as well. Ah! Oh, I've got to wait now. Oh, he does Mario Maker 2 videos. I guess that makes sense. You could easily just play through a, a few levels and record them. You made me want to play Mario Maker 2 though. Twitch is more varied. That's cool. I think that helps on YouTube as well if you just stick to one thing. If you just stick to one game. 
then you know YouTube's more likely to promote you in the algorithm because it knows what the audience likes. Whereas with my kind of with my kind of videos, they're quite varied. So although it makes it more fun for me to actually make the videos, it um, YouTube doesn't always know what to do with them. So I can pretty much guarantee which videos will actually do well and which ones. Uh, will just die the moment they've been released, which is a bit sad. Like the the video I put up last week about my retro setup, which you might be able to see behind me. Uh, over there, you can see all the all the wires up there, and I've got my CRT and my flat screen. I've kind of got it so everything's recordable and streamable. So I'm planning to do some actual retro streams in the future with with the proper retro hardware as well, which should be fun. Yeah, go and check out my, my channel after. I did a whole video about how I got everything set up. And then I've got some really long HDMI cables going across the floor here into my MacBook and my PC so so I can stream and record at the same time. Yeah, Risu Chu's being my cheerleader again. Go and check it out. But not now. Enjoy the stream for now. Hopefully you're all enjoying the stream. Did you all just come from watching Mario Maker? I presume that's what he was playing. I haven't played Mario Maker in ages. A dedicated emote. Is that something I get when I get affiliate as well? Custom emotes. Another god awful game. Okay, what was that? Sonic 06? I kind of want to play Sonic 06 at some point, just for a laugh. Although, you're probably all going to leave now and hate me, but when Sonic 06 came out, I did, I don't know whether I tricked myself, but I did genuinely enjoy it. I enjoyed it so much that um, after college one day, some friends wanted to hang out, and I actually said no because I wanted to go home and fight the final boss in Sonic 06 instead. But that's how much of a Sonic nut I was back then. Uh, I just accepted anything, whether it was good or not. But I've learnt the error of my ways now. Oh, thanks so much, Olympic <laughs> Olympic Poop. I'm, I'm trying to be serious now when you've got a username like that, but yeah, really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy my videos. <laughs> Olympic Poop. I don't know why that's made me laugh so much. But yeah, thanks for stopping by anyway. Appreciate it, if you haven't already gone. And sorry if I butcher everyone's usernames. I'll do my best. <laughs> He's there. There we go. Try another special stage. Didn't, ah, I can't. I can't read the chat now. Also, I'll end up going into a red orb. I've tried this level three times now, and I'm not doing very well at it. Everyone's going to hear me complain about the fact that the music doesn't speed up. So, yeah, this version of the game has some weird glitch where the music in the bonus stage stays the same the entire way through even though the level itself speeds up. But I'm doing better than I did last time. I don't think I've blocked myself off yet. And uh, this is this is where I failed last time because I missed one out. So hopefully I don't need to go that way. Let's see. How many's left? 15? I might be okay. So the idea with these, if you don't know, is to stick around the outside of the blue ones. And yeah, there's the last two. We did it. So if you just go around the outside, then the rest of them turn into rings, and then you can pick the rings up. It's a pretty cool idea. And this this version of Sonic and the Sonic Origins collection is a little bit smoother too. But not as smooth as the ones in Sonic 2, they're like, incredible. Yay, and now for my least favourite level in the game. I was complaining about this one earlier. This is the one with the ghosts, and you have to pull the switches to stop the ghost from attacking you. If you haven't... Oh, just had enough time there. This bit's quite cool, though. You get sort of abseil down the side of the building. And you can you can choose whether to stay on the same side or try and go around to collect the rings. Cartridge points? What's cartridge points? 
Is that, is that a Twitch thing? I don't know anything about Twitch. But I'm glad to be here. Okay, this bit's a bit boring. I'll try and read out some followers while I'm going through this slower level. So, Torrent Freak. Um, X, XDU? I don't know how to pronounce that one. Oh, that was close. BBQ and Games. That sounds good. Blue Zero One, thank you. You can set up your Twitch channel and call them what you want when people watch their own points. It hasn't finished. I haven't got affiliate yet. I only started streaming a month ago, so I have to tick off all the boxes first. Oh, is that the the bits thing? Like, if you're watching, then you get that thing to click on, and you can add add some points to something. What do those points actually do? I've watched a few people before, and I've got, like, a few hundred, but I've, I've never really looked at what they actually do. You can sort of buy things that the channel's got on there or something. I have a lot to learn. I could tell you everything about the YouTube algorithm and, and how to, like organize your channel and stuff, but when it comes to Twitch, I have no idea. But I'm very excited to learn, it's like a whole new world for me. And I've been amazed at how many nice people are on here as well, and everyone's so supportive of each other. YouTube feels like a big competition, whereas Twitch feels just like a big bunch of friends who's all here to like just play games together and chill out, really. So it has a very different vibe, but I like them both. Channel points, what people get for watching. Cheers are worth 0.01 US dollars. Wow, you don't get much from them then. Do people like buy hundreds of bits at once then? Does he not need to be here for you? Maybe. If someone wants to find out how I get channel points, I could try and turn them on. If that's an option. I've got a really boring boss fight to do, so I could probably do it at the same time. This is another reason I hate this level. You basically just have to wait for this boss to go into the into the sand and drain himself. Uh, I think I'm doing it the wrong way. <clears throat> Rage is complete. What does that mean? Is everyone going to leave me now? I, yeah, to put it into perspective how new I am to Twitch, um, I tried to raid someone last time and I wasn't actually following anyone that I knew who was live, so I couldn't raid even if I wanted to. But yeah, I'll get there. I'll get a nice, a nice bunch of people. Yeah, I felt really bad. I was really excited about doing a raid as well and it was like, oh. <laughs> oh, there's no one to, to raid. I did the time before though, I raided someone called Passer Plunger and he was also a fan of my channel, so that was really cool. He even poured it, paused his game when I when I sent everyone over so he could show me around his game room, which was awesome. There we go, nearly done. Told you this boss fight's boring. You just have to hit him into the... I was about to say lava. Yeah, he was upset actually that he didn't see me at the Birmingham Gaming Market a few weeks ago. Because he had something they wanted to give me. It was... Um, if you know the game Trackmania, he basically had... Like... Um, like a custom number plate, I think. But with like the Trackmania logo on it. Which sounds really cool. Follow Dave. Yeah, I will. I'll have to go back through the chat and find out what his channel was called. When I finish this. Uh, this level. I hate this level. Don't worry, the next level's really good. Wanted to make sure it was alright if I had to leave. I'll follow you, Retro, as long as you're family friendly. Yeah, of course I am. Don't worry about that. Um, what, what was the raid thing, anyway? Do you... 
do you get a point like on your account or something if you've stayed on a raid for a certain amount of time? Oh wow, you've never played Sonic before. I'm a huge Sonic fan. I kind of I kind of want to go and play some of the other games after I've played this one. I might be making it look really easy though because I've played this game so many times. Probably I've probably played and completed this at least once a year for the past 20 years. Probably that probably the same with all those 16 bit Sonic games honestly. And I can never remember what to do on this section. You have to jump at exactly the right time to um, try and escape this area before it fills up with ghosts. Dave has channel points rewards for when you go on a raid. Uh, okay. And do the, do the channel points kind of like show who the biggest fans are because you've got more points than someone else? Is that the, is that the point of collecting them? Oh no! Why can't I get out? I think there's... I think that's just supposed to be open. I hope I haven't found a glitch. Oh, it might be that. Crazy level concept. Yeah, you basically have to light the stage up. Else the, the ghosts get angrier. And if it goes pitch black, then you can actually die. Yeah, that, that's how you're supposed to get through there. So you see that little ghost in the corner that's just sort of floating around. He's basically harmless at the minute, he can't touch you. But as it gets darker, there, there becomes more and more of them. And then if you leave it long enough to go pitch black, then they can actually start making you take damage. And this is a really long level. As you can see, a lot of the level loops round. So you have to try and find the right way to get through it. Um, and yeah, this is usually where I get really confused. As you can tell, now they're very angry. Um, and that way is blocked off. Maybe I'm supposed to go there, no. I used to get anxiety playing this level as a kid. Uh, I don't know what to do, I'm just going around in circles. Hey, if anyone has played Sonic and Knuckles before, where am I supposed to go? Uh, do I have to stay up here? Without getting squashed. We'll figure it out. Do I keep going round? No. Oh, this this is a neat action. Oh. Weird, I thought they would get more angry than that. Anyway, thank god we're out of there. That was anxiety inducing. And now we can carry on. Thank god. Let's get out of this level. Sonic is definitely one of your favourite retro slash modern games. Sonic Mega Collection on the GameCube. I had that one as well, that's so good. It's kind of a shame that this new collection only includes four games. Like, Sonic Mega Collection was so much better as, as like a full set. Obviously they weren't in... Uh, they weren't in widescreen like this one is. Oh no. Oh no. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Yeah, obviously they weren't in widescreen, but it was a better collection. I, l I honestly love most of the 3D ones as well. I would love to play the Sonic Adventure games on stream at some point. If you guys would be up to for, what for watching that. I've been thinking about playing Adventure 1 and 2 again anyway. So, why not do it on camera? And the idea with me setting up Twitch in the first place was that I can actually record the gameplay for the games that I want to do videos of as well. So whenever there's like an interesting set of games I want to do a retrospective on or anything like that, then I'll try and actually stream the games too for people who are interested. And then I'll also have the footage to use in the videos. So it's kind of two birds with one stone. The next, um, the next video I'm planning on doing, and that'll probably be my next stream as well, is the Klonoa series. 
So if if you're aware of the Chrono uh, Rev Reverie series, something I think it's called, whatever the new Chrono collection came out recently anyway with HD ports of Chrono One and Two on it, and I played Chrono One uh, a few days ago on here. And I might come back tomorrow to play through Klonoa 2 as well, because I really love them games. And I do want to... I do want to do a retrospective on the series as well at some point. I, w I would show you, but I've just moved all the games over there, but I did have a big stack of all of them. There's some really interesting ones as well. And there's some that just got a fan translation as well for the GBA. So there was a really rare and expensive Klonoa RPG for the GBA that I managed to track down, finally. And it actually just got an English translation, which is really cool. Called Klonoa Heroes. So I'll be really interested in playing that one. And yeah, I've got loads of other ideas for games I want to stream to. I was thinking of doing some Trackmania streams, just because I want to play more of that game. And I was thinking maybe something fun like maybe some of the older SSX games, if any of you have seen or played them before. I think they'll be fun games just to sort of zone out and play and just chat with people at the same time. I suppose that's one of the more fun things about Twitch, is just switching your mind off and just playing something and having people to talk to at the same time. It's really cool. It's basically like when I used to do Let's Plays, but with people that can talk back. God, this level goes on forever. Seven minutes. I better push that again in case the door was closing. That was close, I thought I died then. I did hear people complaining that some of the physics were a bit messed up in this port of Sonic and Knuckles. But so far I haven't noticed anything wrong with it. Seems really nice. In some ways it's actually a little bit better than... Oh, I'm supposed to go up there, aren't I? How are you meant to get over there? There. Oh, that was close. That door was just about to shut then. Hey, you subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Hope you enjoy the videos. There's... Man, how many years? 15 years worth of content for you to get back on. Ah! I wasn't paying attention then. Yeah, I've been doing YouTube for a long time now. Uh, can I get another hit in? Yeah. And another one. Thank you, Tails. He's actually coming in handy. This is kind of like uh, a boss in Sonic uh, Sonic Adventure 2. You know, the one on... Is it Eggman or Tails? It's one of them two, anyway. There we go. I keep forgetting you've got the drop dash in this as well. So they actually took that bit of the Sonic Mania game and turned it into Sonic 1, 2 and 3 as well where you can hold down and jump at the same time and you get a burst of speed as soon as you hit the floor Excited for Sonic Movie 2 I saw it when it came out in the cinema It was really good Yeah, I really enjoyed it I hope they do a third one I know Jim Carrey said he's going to retire but hopefully he changes his mind for one last film. And then they can make a... Um, maybe they could do half of a Sonic 3 movie, and then you'd have to come back five months later to watch the second half, and it'll be Sonic 3 movie and Knuckles. But you have to have your original cinema ticket, and then they staple the second part onto it. Anyway, I'm going to be quiet and let you listen to the amazing music of Lava Reef Zone. My favourite song in the game. Man, I love this level. And this song. 
I used to actually have this on my iPod in college, back in the day. Uh, so catchy. I love this song so much. I'm so glad it wasn't replaced. I'm so glad Michael Jackson didn't have anything to do with it. I would have been I would have been so sad if they replaced this. I always have video game music. Yeah. I've got a load of video game soundtracks on CD actually, but they're all up in the loft at the minute. And I would like to, I would like to do a video on like my favourite game soundtracks, but I know that it would just get demonetized straight away. Because you know what you know what YouTube's like. Actually, I did do a podcast a few weeks ago where I shared some of my favourite game music. Obviously, I don't want to stretch you guys too thin and tell you to go and follow me everywhere, but if you do like game music and you want to hear some of my favourite composers, I did an episode two weeks ago where I I basically picked two games from each of my favourite composers and shared them all in a like half an hour podcast, and a lot of people really enjoyed that. And they were happy that I included Toby Fox and didn't turn it into a meme. Who are my favourites? Without giving the episode away. Um, Yuzo Koshiro was on there. Toby Fox was there. Um, Hydelic, the people who made the soundtrack for Tetris Effect. Uh, Laura Shigihara. David Wise, of course. With his incredible Donkey Kong Country soundtracks. Who else did I play you? Um, Yasunori Mitsuda for his work on Chrono Cross. And what was the other game I showed? Ah, oh, Yuzo Koshiro is amazing. He is most famous, I think, for the music on the Streets of Rage games. He actually follows me on Twitter. I was completely starstruck when he followed me. Uh, what else has he done? He did Act Razor for the SNES. And more recently, he did the soundtrack to all the Etrian Odyssey games. Uh, what else? He's done loads of stuff. He also did the remake of Act Razor that came out recently with like a full orchestral score. It was incredible. So, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Yuzo Koshiro. And the amazing thing is that even with some of his new game compositions, he still uses the... I think it's the Sharp X68000, like the original PC that he used to compose all his Mega Drive music on. Because he loves that FM synth sound. It just sounds so good. Hey, Mick Manx here. Good to see you again. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, I'm trying to think who else I included on that on that composers video. Who are some of your favourite composers? Anyone in the chat? Got any favourites that I didn't mention? There was loads more I wanted to include as well, so I might do a second part at some point. Ah. Oh, Zon was another one. He did the well, not just the soundtracks, but he made the Toho games as well. But they're they're just incredible, the games and the music. But I don't think I'd be able to stream a Toho game. I wouldn't be able to talk. You have to be super focused. Good to see you all. Yeah, I got a, I got a good raid earlier, so there's a load of people watching me. Oh no, my last ring. Oh, I wonder if this boss is the same as the final boss, where you can spin dash underneath his fingers. I can't remember. I'll try that out at the end of the game, see whether I can do that again. But there's a really easy way of beating the final boss where you basically just stay just outside the reach of his hand and just continually spin dash. Yeah, over a hundred people. I felt so bad I couldn't read everyone's names out when they followed. This boss is intense. I heard someone follow just now. Thank you. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and spin dash and see whether it actually does anything. Let's try. I know on the final boss it does. Let's see if it does anything on this one. No. Oh well. I've got my safety ring. 
just keep walking it away. Oh my god, if you want to see me struggle on a boss, go back and watch the end of Sonic 2, what I played a few weeks ago. I must have tried for like an hour on the final boss in that game. Because it doesn't give you any rings, and it's just horrible. Well, I did it in the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I took a drink and couldn't pick the box up. Hey, someone else followed as well. Let's see if I can find your names on the iPad. J Green Frog 100. Thank you. Raw Prism 99 and F Horn Player. Thanks so much, everyone. Really appreciate that. I like the composer behind the Mario Galaxy series of games. Um, I think that was Koji Kondo. Yeah, he does in incredible music. And the fact that Mario Galaxy is so different to any other Mario game as well. It makes it a really special soundtrack. And Galaxy 2. <clears throat> Gusty Garden from Galaxy 2. What an incredible song. Ah, I was trying to read the chat and didn't see the fire then. I like... Ah, oh, greetings from the Kawase Discord. No way. Oh, that's a game I want to play on stream as well at some point. You know, even though I don't, even though I don't write much on the Kawase Discord, I do keep checking up on it all the time, and I love all the all the fan art that you guys put on there. So yeah, I'm there in the background, still waiting for them to release the original, the original games on the Switch, which I doubt will ever happen. How about classic mode? I haven't tried classic mode yet, honestly. Maybe we can have a play around after I finish this and we can check out the difference. I know it's, it says classic mode, but it still runs in the new game engine. I don't know whether it's just exactly the same and they just cut the sides off to make it look 4x3. Maybe. Ah. Uh. You've, you've got me wanting to play Umihara Kawase again, though. Maybe I should stream that. I can show off some of my Kawase skills. See if I can do any of them speedrun strats where you fling yourself around half the stage. Hey, we found another special stage. This looks the same as the last one, but I already, I already completed the last one. Let's see how we get on. I hope they do make another Umihara Kawase game, but Fresh was such a disappointment, honestly. It didn't have any of the sort of atmosphere of the older ones. And that food meter was just just a stupid addition. Like, why punish you for playing the game, basically? This one seems easier than the other one. As long as I don't accidentally go the wrong way and block myself off. Let's see, we haven't been this side. Oh, we have been this side. Uh, okay. Maybe I spoke too soon. Ah, ah. Okay, I'm going this way. I've dedicated. Okay, we haven't been this way. But there's still nothing new. Maybe the only things left are to actually just go around and pick up all the blue orbs from around the side then. I swear I'm missing something. Okay, I'm doing okay so far. I don't want to get stuck on the other side of the bit where I've already taken two out, though. Oh no, there it is! Two left! Yeah, we did it! Galaxy 1 is definitely up there. It's one of my favourites. I also managed 100% without a guide, which is pretty cool. The final star of the second is extremely difficult. Oh my god! The final star of Galaxy 2 is insane! I always want to try and 100% all the Mario games, but oh my god, that... I actually have a, a photo of when Galaxy 2 came out and I was stuck on that final level. I actually used up like over 100 lives and it took me like 10 hours just to finish that one level. I think that's... yeah, that's easily got to be the hardest level in any Mario game. 
Oh no, you need to play you need to play Galaxy 2. It's such a good game. I prefer it over the first one. I really don't understand why Nintendo didn't put it on the Switch as part of the All-Stars collection. But, you know, Nintendo makes a lot of weird decisions. So, who knows what they were thinking. But yeah, Galaxy 2 is incredible. I love how just completely different every single level is. So inventive. And then near the end where you get the, the remake of the N64 level. When I saw that for the first time I got so excited. You get to go to Womp's Fortress and see it in, at the time, amazing graphics. They probably look terrible now, but... Yeah, at the time, I was really impressed with it. And then 3D World came out and it was kind of, like, not as exciting as Galaxy. It seemed a lot less... Um, you know, Galaxy seemed, like, epic. Like, whoa, where can they take Mario next? And then 3D World was basically just... Normal Mario levels, just randomly thrown together in a 3D environment. Which is cool, but it kind of lacked that magic spark that Galaxy had. And to an extent, Odyssey had, but not... Uh, I don't know, Odyssey kind of had that magic to it. It's not that I don't like 3D World. I think it's a great game. Oh no, Knuckle. Yeah, that's what I mean. 3D World was kind of like going back to basics and introducing it to new people. And getting four players to work. Oh no. So, yeah, it has its merits. Oh, this fight's annoying. You have to... After this bit, there's a bit where you have to keep jumping. You'll, you'll see in a second anyway. This bit's easy. You just have to just keep going up. This kind of reminds me of one of those fan games where they make everything like crazy filters and stuff and make you run run away from things. Just a lot slower, but yeah. Down here is the annoying bit. There is a one-up somewhere or there's a ring box or something. Uh, firebox, that's it. The firebox is really important to get because it means you can actually walk on the lava at the bottom of this area. So don't get the electric one there, but what it means is, look, you would usually die but if you pick the fire one up instead of the electric one, you don't need to worry. <clears throat> oh, the new job is great, thanks. I went I went to the office yesterday to meet everyone and pick my laptop up. Which was great, everyone was super nice, so friendly, really excited about me working there. So yeah, I, I couldn't ask for a better position, really. And yeah, I'm so glad, because I was getting really I was getting really fed up in my old job. And I needed a change. And, you know, until YouTube takes off enough to make that my job, I've got to try and do something that doesn't make me go crazy. So yeah, really happy. And a nice pay rise as well. To buy even more retro games. Uh, fully remote this job is. Although I, I, I had to go in the office once just to, to pick up my name badge and, uh, you know, get my laptop with all the software on it and stuff. But apart from that, I probably won't need to go back there. Unless they want me to. But I'm happy working remote. I've worked remote for the past few years anyway. And it's great as well, because if it wasn't remote, I wouldn't wanna I wouldn't wanna commute all the way to Manchester every day. It took like three hours to get there and Well, it took me about six hours to get back because the trains were all messed up. What job is it? So I'm working as a a solutions architect. So basically going out to companies and creating their Microsoft solutions for them. So programming whatever whatever programs they need to use internally, setting up their SharePoint sites and their file storage and stuff like that. I find it really interesting. And yeah. I'm happy, because that's what I wanted to do in, in my old job, but I could never really do it internally. There was just loads of things blocking it, and I always just had to do it on the side. So, the fact that I can do that full-time now is great. Studying cybersecurity. That's cool. The guy I went to pick my laptop up off yesterday, he'd he'd just graduated from cybersecurity, actually. And he'd got, he'd got a job there, and he was, um, you know, installing all the patches on the laptop and things. 
And I think I just wasn't paying any attention because I just went all the way back to the start of the level for some reason. You've been working remotely since the pandemic as well. I worked remotely a little bit before, but um, I'm not paying any attention. Yeah, I worked remotely a bit before, but then after the pandemic, yeah, it was fully remote. And then just after the pandemic, my company got bought out and I got moved to an office that was up in Edinburgh. So whenever I had to go and visit them, that was like an entire week, you know, taken away from me, basically, because I would have to go and stay up there at a hotel for a few days on end. And yeah, I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. Even if it was nice, because they put me up in a really nice hotel and like, gave me f first class train tickets all the way up there and stuff. And Edinburgh was a really nice city. But yeah, I'm glad I don't have to do that. This one's fully remote. You've never got all the Chaos Emeralds in any Sonic game. It is difficult to do. And each time you each time you mess up, you get more and more panicked that you're not going to be able to get to all the special stages in time. Knuckles just went thump. Yep, and now he's... Uh, now he's been brutally murdered by Eggman. We even got to see his skeleton. But it's okay. Now he's had some sense knocked into him, and now he's my friend. <laughs> I think Sky Sentry is the next zone, which is another one of my favourites. You have to move halfway across America for a job, only for them to go fully remote three weeks later. Oh no! What did you do after that? Did you move back to where you lived before? Or, or did you did you stay there and just find somewhere to live? Oh, that was, that was bad luck. Did you get that job just before Covid hit then? There's a thing to grab onto, I knew it was there. Apparently, Sky Sanctuary is going to be one of the fantasy areas in Sonic Frontiers. From what people have seen for, from some leaks that someone shared from Summer Game Fest. So that'll be cool, if that's real. Obviously it was in, it was in Sonic uh, Generations anyway. But yeah, one of my favourite levels, and I love the music. I know I've said that about a lot of them. And one of my favourite games as well. Sonic and Knuckles is just kind of like comfort gaming for me. Am I an avid Sonic fan? I guess I am. I mean, I've played and finished all the games, so I guess that makes me an avid fan. I don't really go back and replay them that often, though. The only ones I end up replaying is Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, I guess. But yeah, I do really enjoy Sonic, and I'm looking forward to Frontiers. I know that people say it's a bit meh and it needs a lot more work doing to it, but... I'll hold out hope until it turns up. Like I said earlier, I was, I was happy back in college to play Sonic 06 when that came out. So... Maybe I'm just crazy. But yeah, playing these games now, they feel so easy. I don't know whether it's just that I've got better, or if I was just really bad as a kid. But I remember really struggling in these games, and now I can just... I can just whiz through them, no problem. I'd love to play some more Mega Drive games as well. I don't know whether Sonic 06 brings me joy, but... I think I was just happy that there was a new Sonic game that was kind of reminiscent of Sonic Adventure, because I was a huge Sonic Adventure fan, and I would basically take anything I could get. I stuck around Texas where my job was for almost two years, moved back to Washington last year. That's cool. I don't really have anything to add to that. I don't know anything about Texas or, or Washington. Apart from the fact that Retro Studios is in Texas. I think. And uh, hopefully they're hard at work on 
on Metroid Prime 4. It's been a while since I've said anything. I don't get the point of those those platforms that you can go inside. They don't take you anywhere. Hmm. I think so. I think I've just played the game so much that it's just muscle memory. Because I used to struggle with the Sonic Advance games as well, and now whenever I play them I can just whiz through them, no problem. I wish Sega would re-release the Sonic Advance games actually, they're so good. Oh, here's the uh, much simplified version of that horrible fight from Sonic 2. Except you can't use the spin dash trick in this one. And thank god it doesn't make you fight the other part of it this boss fight. Wow, they really made this a lot, a lot easier. That's crazy. You live 10 minutes away from Retro Studios, wow. That's cool. Were you never tempted to ask for a job? I wouldn't stop pestering them. Yeah, the final battle that took me forever. That's sort of like the first half of it. So you, you do that bit, and then and then you sort of do a second section of it, which is Eggman's robot. But by the time you get to that, you've got no rings whatsoever, and it's one hit kill, and there's only a tiny little gap where you can actually, you know, cause any damage to him. And it's, it's just really frustrating. Here's another really fun level. This one kind of reminds me of the aesthetic of Sonic Adventure 2 as well. And you'll, you'll get to see the anti-gravity stuff that I was talking about earlier as well in this one. Uh, I can't remember whether that's in part 1 or part 2 though. But. Oh yeah, the good thing about the electric shield here as well is that you can stand on the electrified floor without getting damaged. Uh, oh no, I lost it. Well. You can see what it's like anyway, it's the electric floor up there. Oh yeah, there's this bit as well. There's a weird boss in the middle of this where you have to light light up this ball that bounces backwards and forwards. And you just get you just sort of get tossed around on there. Which can be pretty frustrating. But yeah, like if I had the lightning shield there, I could just go straight through that bit. There's some fun bits later on in this level as well, where you go in sort of a, a tunnel that sort of spins you around everywhere. Personally, with Sonic Generations 3DS used some levels or a boss from the Advanced series. Yeah, that was a that was a really missed trick from the. Th Here's the cool bit I was I was talking about. This kind of reminds me of Adventure 2. It's kind of pointless because it just spins you around in circles, but I think it looks cool. Yeah, Sonic Generations should have been focused on the handheld Sonic games, I think. They kind of did it with some of the Sonic Rush stages, but they could have done a lot more. Like, they could have even gone back and recreated some of the the Game Gear levels. That would have been really cool. So yeah, Sega missed a trick with that. I didn't think the 3DS Sonic Generations were that good at all, to be honest. It kind of felt a bit rushed. At least, obviously, compared to the console version. It didn't stop me picking it up on day one, though, obviously. That reminds me, actually, I wonder if I can just go through this and keep picking rings up. Hey, easy. Uh, what was I going to say? I haven't played the 3DS Sonic Generations game in a long time, so maybe it's not as bad as I thought. This is the weird mini-boss that I was telling you about. There's not really a boss, you just have to keep bouncing around until you've lit everything up in red. But obviously... Hey, actually, it's a bit easier in widescreen. In the original, it's hard to tell where it lands. But, yeah, that wasn't too bad. And then you just go through this door here and it spits you out. I've had some new followers. I'll try and read. Grenade Games, thank you. Uh, Greeder23. Oh, this is an auto, but I can keep going. F Horn Player, Raw Prism 99. Uh, there's some more up there, but I haven't got to them yet. But thank you for the follows. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, I think I have to do three more streams before I get affiliate. So thank you for helping out with that as well. 
if you're if you're just joining, uh, like I mentioned earlier, for those of you who weren't here, I've only been streaming for about a month, so or oh, this is pretty new to me, and I still haven't hit my affiliate check boxes yet, but I'm nearly there. Not that I really know what it does, so I'll just figure out at the time. Anyway, another easy boss fight. You can just you can just cheese it because you can always just keep kicking the ring up. I remember that boss being so difficult as a kid, and now I realise you can just stand right in the middle to get through that first phase. And even the second bit, really. Especially if Tails is there to help you out. This is kind of reminiscent of that fight from... I can't remember which game it is. Sonic 1? Sonic 2? There we go, we're done. Uh, yeah, apparently Affiliate's all about getting that sweet Twitch money. How long do the streams have to be for Affiliate? I don't think it's to do with how long they have to be, it's how many that you do in a month. Hmm. Until last, until like two months ago I didn't know anything about Twitch either. But from the... Yeah, I'm expecting all of like 5p to come from it. Oh no! Anyway, from the checkboxes, it have, I think, at least five people watch each stream, which I've hit already. Um, get 50 followers, I think. Stream for seven days in one month. And stream for a certain overall time. So, No, they have to be on different days, unfortunately. It shows you a calendar as well. I was planning to do uh, one stream a week, but obviously that wouldn't fill their criteria, so I had to throw a few extra ones in the middle. And it turned out that I really enjoyed doing it, so I'll probably I'll probably end up doing two streams a week, maybe. I was streaming Klonoa last time, in the new collection that just came out. I want to try and find games that I can play in one sitting, because I think that's, that's really fun then. And then people who join from the start can actually see all the way through the game too. And... I've actually been building up a list of games. Oh yeah, you play mostly on the ceiling in this level. This one's got a cool boss fight as well, where you, you use these things to send spikes up and down to, to hit Eggman. And that was muscle memory there as well, jumping over that pit, because you can go down there if you're not careful. And stopping on that conveyor belt too. As you can see, that's pretty awkward. Because you, um, you, you, you have to line it up. Depends on the way the conveyor belt's moving, which can be tricky. Oh. Oh yeah, I forgot there's something new for Sonic 3 that I haven't mentioned as well. You can, if you jump twice, if you sort of, you know, do a double jump, like jump and then jump again, you can get the shield as well, which lets you hit enemies with spikes, which is really useful. Closed captioning on Twitch? I don't know. Maybe not because it's because it's in real time. Although I think YouTube's bringing something like that out using like machine-generated captions, so maybe. I haven't seen an option for that though, so I don't really know. Maybe someone else knows who's watching. Can you do closed? Oh no! Bottomless pit. First one I've found in this game so far. The Sonic Advance games are infamous for their for their bottomless pits. I need some rings. It's weird doing a spin dash upside down. Okay, we've got one ring. That's better. Uh, T Practice 24, thank you for the follow. I love all these really random usernames. Everyone in the chat, give me some background on how you picked your username. I'm really curious, because... Like... They must mean something to you. Or was it just whatever Twitch had left? I was really annoyed that I couldn't get Retro Break. Someone's taken it, and I think... Oh, no! Yeah, and I think they don't even use it. Yeah, as long as you... As long as you have at least one ring, then you're safe. And then, yeah, like that, as soon as you lose your rings, it's instant death. Which is really annoying if you, um, 
yeah, if you're stuck in a place like this with no rings, there's not really anything you can do. Apart from just keep trying to get through it. Oh, that's not fair. That hit me by like one pixel. Huge fan of Kingdom Hearts, so I made an anagram of my name and threw an X in there like Sora. Oh, that's clever. I used to be a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. But I haven't played... Um, I haven't played all of the extra spin-off games, like the Birth by Sleep introduction game that was included in the collection, or I haven't played the latest Melody one on the Switch, but I've played all the other ones, I've played all the PS2 ones, I've played all of the DS and PSP games. I do really enjoy the series, although it does get a bit convoluted. Maybe that's an understatement. It gets very convoluted. I really enjoyed some of the extra games. 358 over two days is actually my favourite game in the series. Oh no, I missed it again. Oh. Uh, yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3 was weird. It, um... It almost felt like it was a long wait for nothing that important. Oh, man. Good job there's unlimited continues on this version. I would have had to start from the beginning of the stage by now. I can do it this time. I got this. Why do I always go into that every time? There is one other Kingdom Hearts game I haven't played, thinking about it. I haven't played uh, Chain of Memories yet. The card fighting one. I want to try and get it on the GBA. Play it, you know, the, the way it was originally intended. Right, I need to concentrate here now. No, oh, let me up, let me up! Okay. Is there one more? Or is that it? Yay, that's it, there's a checkpoint as well. We're safe. That was difficult. Haven't played any Kingdom Hearts games. Puzzle games and Fall Guys. Well, Fall Guys you don't really need to think about. That's just a game you can come back to whenever. So, maybe, maybe you should pick up an RPG as well to go alongside them. But, what puzzle games are you playing? I like puzzle games. Does Pegon count as a puzzle game? That's probably my favourite. Or hmm, Tetris is an easy answer, but probably some version of Tetris. Tetris Effect. I don't know whether that counts as a puzzle game or meditation, though. But I do love it. Haven't heard of Peggle. Uh, it's kind of like Pachinko, but not really. You have a lot more control over it. It was made by Popcap in the early 2000s. Uh, it came out on the DS, and there's a sequel to it on the Xbox as well. Which people went crazy for at E3. Yeah, Tetris is a nice meditation game. Especially Tetris Effect, with all the particles like floating around and stuff. Especially in VR as well. Oh, this, this is an annoying bit. So when you jump on this platform, it moves from side to side. But yeah, you should you should try Peggle. It's it's so addictive. You can spend hours and hours on it. Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. Yeah, that's really good. I saw that the N64 one just came out on the Switch, so I'm really I'm really happy about that. Ah, oh, Tetris Effect in VR is like mind blowing. So this is the boss that I was on about earlier. So there's two ways of hitting the boss. You can either try and time it so that when you go through here, like this, I think I've left it a bit late there, but you get the idea, they'll fly up. And then the other thing you can do is do that, and when he turns his shields over, let's try and time that one. Yeah, then it'll flick upside down, and then hit him while he's in the air. 
Again, this was another fight that I used to find really difficult as a kid. And now... It's all just about getting the timing right. The only annoying thing is sometimes you can go back down the bottom and get hit by the spikes that come off the top. And there's nothing you can do about it. But yeah, pretty easy fight. Pretty cool fight too. Yay, high five, green frog. Someone else who loves Peggle. Oh yeah, need to remember to move there. Now, this can be an annoying fight. Sometimes. This is the bit I was talking about, so watch this. That's such an oversight. You can just spin dash. Just stay in place and spin dash. And you can take out all his fingers without doing anything. I used to find Tetris stressful, but I've played it so much now. It's, a, it's the kind of game I can just zone out to. Look at this. Don't even need to do anything. Just enjoy the music. So good. It seems a little bit muffled in this version of the game, though. Now, this is the difficult part of the fight. You have to dodge a laser, dodge a fire, and then... I think, if I remember right, his chest opens up, and it reveals, like, the gem that you can jump and get. What a good Tails. Tails has been very helpful this game. Or do I just need to try and hit him? Ah, there's the gem. And then... Just try and duck underneath it. Without falling off the end of the stage. Oh, I thought Tails would get another hit in there. This is so, so much easier than the fight from Sonic 2. Like, it's not just completely unfair. I wonder whether I can jump over it. Come back! Oh no, I lost my ring. <gasps> no, that's not fair! Ah! Uh, just as I killed him as well. And now I've got to do it with no rings. Oh, I can't believe that. That should have let me pass. That's so unfair. Am I going to have flashbacks now to Sonic 2? Oh, I've finished my drink as well. Hey, Rissu, if you're listening, go and get me another drink. Oh, man. I can't believe that. I did have it first try as well. And now I'm going to be here for ages because I've got to do it with no rings. So what I've got to do now is really try and study the timing for that laser beam. Usually there's way to get rings. I'm not on the final boss, I don't think there's any rings. Only because you died in-game. What game have you been playing? Yeah, I don't think there's any rings in this fight. Unless anyone knows of any secret ones. Oh man, I'm so annoyed I'm going to do all this again. No, I had to go to those fingers. So, I'm going to have to try and not be too eager to hit him. Oh god, that's close. Okay, so, just before it finishes charging up, I should be able to jump. Ah, uh, so just just before the sound finishes. Yeah, this is the final boss. And I've only been streaming for an hour and a half, so... Maybe I'll try and find something else to do in Sonic Origins. Or... Ah, uh, it's annoying that I have to go through this part again. Maybe I can play Sonic Mania, actually. I could probably whiz through that in, like, an hour. I think I've got that downloaded. This can kind of be a two games in one stream, then. Oh, you know what? I'm kind of tempted to go back and do the last level again. Just so that I can have some rings. I'll give it one more attempt. Come on. 
Why can't Tails line up for the other one at the same time? Sonic and the Secret Rings is a pretty great Sonic game. Yeah, I like Sonic and the Secret Rings. It has a bad rep. Ah, oh, no, I'm not going to get the timing right for that. Let's see, if I restart, where's that going to start me from? No. Can I get back to the level before it? Zone 13. You like Shadow. You really want me to play Shadow the Hedgehog, don't you? Oh, cool, it started me with 20 rings. Hello. The guys are letting me die. Huh? The guys are letting me die. What are you playing? The Vampires. Oh yeah, you showed me the trail for it. Yeah. Well, have fun. have fun. Don't die too much. If I had my PS3 up here, I'd play Sonic 06. I think I've got Project 06 installed on the computer. Which is like a fan remake of it, which uh, which actually improves a lot. It got got rid of a lot of the glitches from Sonic 06. Yeah, the music is kind of a lot quieter than sound effects, which it shouldn't be. It's like it's missing that Mega Drive punch. What makes Sonic 06 bad? That is a loaded question. How many hours do you want me to stream for? Everything. The game was released like a year before it should have been. It was built first for the for the PS3, and then um, the PS3 was delayed by a year, so they had to make it work for the 360 instead. And then... There was, there was all sorts of other issues with it during development and basically the final game is just a complete broken mess. Like a five part. Yeah, yeah, I did it. I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, the whole game is a broken mess though. Like, you go around a loop and sometimes you'll just stop at the top of it and nothing will happen. Um, the story makes absolutely no sense. There's like some huge time travel plot that's full of plot holes. Um, oh god, that was close. The levels themselves are cool, like the ideas are cool. Um, sometimes if you're playing as Knuckles you can get stuck on the wall and you try and jump off and he just sort of glitches into place. You can fall through loops, sometimes you run past rings and nothing happens. You just don't pick them up. Oh yeah, and because I got all of the Chaos Emeralds we're actually going to do the final fight in the Doomsday Zone. So just like Sonic Adventure 2, you start out with Super Sonic flying through an asteroid field. And of course, because this is Super Sonic, every second you lose rings. So you need to keep picking rings up. I always thought this was so cool though. Like, such an awesome end into the game. Um, but yeah, back to Sonic 06. Obviously the bit that everyone knows is Sonic's love affair with Elise. Which is honestly completely blown way out of proportion compared to what it's actually like in the game. It's basically just the ending cutscene and the bit before it. But yeah, it still doesn't make any sense why they chose why they chose to do that. But yeah, it's so weird. None of it makes any sense. They in, they introduced the new character Silver just to um, yeah they introduced Silver just so that they could uh, show off the Havoc physics engine. I can't remember what to do though. Guide these missiles, missiles back into it, right? Hey, anyone who's played Sonic 3 recently, what do I do here? Hit them back into him? No. Something happened up there. Is that just a certain bit I'm supposed to hit? I don't know whether this is working or not, but he's flashing, so I'm doing something right. I'm supposed to direct the laser, uh, direct, direct the missiles into his face. Okay. That was really awkwardly done, but I did it. 
But yeah, this whole sequence is so cool. It just looks awesome. Although usually I don't pick up all the emeralds, so I can't really remember what to do. It's been a long time, probably 10 years since I've seen this stage. But yeah, I remember being blown away when I first got there as well. And it is such an achievement as well to be able to get all the emeralds to get to this part of the game. I think the music was different though. I don't know whether this is another another soundtrack that's been changed. Possibly. I'll try and be a bit more careful on this next section. Oh, there's not many rings here. I'll need to be a bit more careful anyway. Or try and do it a bit faster. I think I had 60. Oh, I've nearly got the same. It's not quite live and learn, is it, this music? I kind of want to go straight into playing Sonic Adventure 2, but I should probably... I should probably go through them in order, actually. So... I guess Sonic Adventure 1 comes next, if you don't count Sonic 3D and Sonic R and stuff like that. Oh, you know what? Maybe Sonic R would be fun to play on stream. I know people hate that game, but I love it. It's a guilty pleasure game, Sonic R is. And I will not be able to stop myself singing the entire way through that. Come on, where's the boss? There it is. Oh, okay. I was doing it wrong. I'm supposed to be boosting through this section to get to him. Suddenly this section makes more sense. I thought this was this is going on for a while. Get back here. Man, what a cool ending. Whatever brings me joy. Basically every game behind me. <laughs> Yay, there we go. Sonic 3 and Knuckles complete. So yeah, maybe I'll go and play Sonic Mania. This can be a two streams in one. I usually just play games on their original console or through official game streaming services. I'm not big into emulation. I'm not big into emulation if I can help it either. Unless I really need to, to record something. Yay, thank you. And thanks for sticking with me as well, everyone everyone who joined from the other channel. I'm so glad you enjoyed it enough to stick around. And let's see if there's a new cutscene at the end, because for the other games in the Origins collection, they've had really nice, brand new cartoon anime intros and outros. So fingers crossed we get one. Oh yeah, because we got all the emeralds, we get the, the proper final ending. Yay, oh, thanks so much, uh, DGR Dave. I really do appreciate that. As soon as I've finished streaming, I'll go and give you a follow on Twitch and check out some of your streams sometime as well. Let's keep it going. Yeah, I'm really excited to start doing Twitch. It's something I've been umming and ahhing about for years. I'm really enjoying it. Wonder if I can skip these. Yeah, there we go. I don't know what the the relevance of that is. Yeah, here we go. New ending cutscene. These look incredible. I love the style of these. Hey, there he is. Thank you. Thanks for sending all these people over as well. They've, they've been really enjoying watching it. Really appreciate it. Thanks. I'll check your YouTube channel out as well. Everyone in the chat's got me back into one and play, wanting to play Mario Maker again. So thanks for that. 
All oh, I missed what that said then. All titles cleared something. Did I get something for it? 